This is the world known to most of us. Our school, our friends, our families, everyone we know lives on this planet. And everything we experience happens on this planet. This is the world we belong to, but it is also the boundary of many people's perceptions. What we haven't yet considered, and what we rarely consider, is what lies beyond this planet. Now, allow me to take you on a brief tour of our universe, starting from our blue planet. We're a part of the solar system. There's the sun that brightens our world, and there are eight planets and their moons, along with two asteroid belts, all constrained in elliptical orbits around the sun. There are numerous asteroids dashing through the space between the planets, sometimes plunging into planets and moons. There are also comets that eject materials into space as they vaporize under the heat of our sun, leaving behind trails of meteorites that create meteor showers on Earth as we pass through. This is the universe that we are somewhat familiar with. Humans have sent spacecraft all over the universe, all over the solar system. We have seen colored images and high resolution images of various members of our solar system. And we've learned about these in science class somewhere in our journey of education. But what lies beyond the solar system though is way more alien. You probably know that our solar system is part of the Milky Way galaxy. Um, and this Milky Way galaxy is made up of 200 billion stars like our sun. And more specifically, we're here. On the Orion Cygnus arm, about 26,000 flat years away from the galactic center. If you look out in the night sky somewhere really dark, you can see part of our galaxy. But the thing is, our galaxy is about 100,000 light years wide and, and 1,000 light years thick. This means that we may never take a photograph of our galaxy, our entire galaxy view from beyond, like this image shown on the slide, because we're in the Milky Way galaxy itself and there isn't really any near prospect of sending a spacecraft out into Earth and then having to take the photograph and send the image back to Earth. So basically we're stranded on our beautiful planet, unable to move anywhere on the universal scale. But the story doesn't just end here. Observations show that galaxies don't seem to be randomly distributed in space. They tend to form galaxy clusters. Our Milky Way, along with several neighboring galaxies, such as the Andromeda Galaxy, are in a galaxy cluster called the local group, which is about 10 million light years above. And in this, and there's estimated to be millions of such galaxy clusters in our universe, each consisting about 10 to 1,000 stars, uh, 10 to 1,000 galaxies, sorry. So this is our universe, but this is not just that. The galaxy clusters tend to form bigger groups as well, and those larger groups are called superclusters. And our local group, along with the giant Virgo, superclus Virgo cluster, are in the local supercluster, or more commonly called the Virgo supercluster. This supercluster is at mind blowingly 110 million light years across. And this is not the only supercluster in the universe. It's just one in about 10 million. And viewing our universe at this scale is totally exotic. We cannot recognize anything that we're familiar with in our daily life at this scale. And the sizes of these structures are just beyond our ability to really interpret with any real and solid meaning. We just simply cannot imagine something that's hundreds of millions of light years. And our Earth, at this scale is equivalent to nothing, literally nothing. And seeing these images, it makes me often applaud the, uh, the intelligence of the human being that we can actually know so much about our universe from our observatories near Earth. 
And to be honest, in the night sky, we can see, we can look into the night sky and we can see far beyond. And what we are doing actually is seeing in the, to the past because life's the fastest traveler will need quite a long time to get to reach us from those distant stars and galaxies. So well, the galaxies and stars that we are seeing now are actually what they were like when the lights left them. The nearest star to us, Proxima Centauri, um, we see that the way it was 4.3 light years, 4.3 years ago, because it's 4.3 light years from Earth. And as we look further into space, we look further into history. This provides us the opportunity to study the past and evolution of our universe. But the light from those distant galaxies are extremely dim, which means that we would need very powerful telescopes in order to see them. And because of that, we are not yet able to see the first galaxy formed. There is so much more that we don't understand about our universe, and there are many scientists devoting their lives in an attempt to shorten this gap in our understanding by a little amount. But for the general public, this doesn't seem to be something that we should care about. The things that happen in the universe don't really threaten our existence. The most fierce events in the universe, such as supernova explosion or gamma rivers, they usually happen so far away that astronomers have to desperately search for them to study. Well, so why would we care? Well, at, well, knowing our space in the universe, knowing our place in the universe is the best cure for our purpose. It might seem that we dominated our world from what is happening on Earth, but just a glance at the true magnificence of, of our universe would make one dismiss this idea. We're simply too small to even be noticing things, let alone dominating things. And to see our planet from a universal perspective make me so grateful for our existence, that we're granted such a beautiful and lively planet and the mind to appreciate and understand our universe. So now, if you would, I would like you to consider the very first question again. What does our world look like? Would you change your answer? In the past, when people cannot travel overseas, they consider their homeland as their world. But then, as we go out to discover all the continents and oceans that are beyond our sight, we start to consider our world to be the Earth. Now that we've known so much about our universe, why don't we start to consider our universe as our world? And I want to share with you this image. This is a photograph taken by the Hubble Space Telescope as a part of the project called the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. In this photograph, there are about 10,000 galaxies, all taken in a very small area of space that's only 11.5 square arc minutes across. And that means nearly 13 million such images would be needed to cover the entire sky. This is our world. Posting all these small worlds, each at a distant place, most remain unknown. To end this talk, I would like to share with you one of my favorite pictures. Some of you might have seen it before. It is a family portrait of our solar system, taken by Voyager 1 in 1990 as it left the solar system. And along with it is one of my favorite quotes from Carl Sagan. Look again at that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. Unless everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of corrupt and suffering, thousands of confidence, ideologies, religion, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, Every young couple in love, every mom and dad, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a moat of dust, 
to spend it in a sunbeam. It is often said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. Well, there's perhaps no better demonstration of our, the folly of human conceit than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores the importance for us to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dots, the only home we've ever known. The next time you see the image of a planet, a galaxy, a star, or even a black hole, try to think of it as a part of our world, like just like a tree in the backyard. Our world guided us to explore, and as we keep exploring and trying to understand, the more intimate our world will seem to us, and the humbler we will be. Thank you. Thank you.